Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I want to show you a really exciting feature from 2021.3. I hadn't actually covered this in the previous batch of videos that I made. The new feature is called linked tasks. Let me just show you very quickly what it looks like. If I go in here to this particular prep flow, you'll see that it's just one prep flow that basically gets some data together from Excel file. It's actually the sample workflow from Tableau Prep and it exports it out to a published data source here at the very end on the right hand side. If we go to the schedule tasks tab, you'll see that I have a flow and a schedule and you can see that it says one of two linked tasks. If I actually click on that, you'll see that there's actually some sense of order when these flows run. So the first flow is called part one, the second flow is called part two. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set all of this up. But the great thing here is, is that flow two will only run when part one succeeds. And I can actually set them on the same hourly schedule and it will run them one after another, essentially running them sequentially. Now, this is a feature I wish Tableau Server had for all data sources. But in today's video, I'm just going to show you how to set this up in prep as it's now available in 2021.3. Let's get stuck in. Now, before we get stuck in, if you're a server admin or a site admin for Tableau Online, you're going to want to go to the settings tab here and you need to make sure that this top option here is enabled. It's not enabled by default. You have to come in here and let people uh, uh, use this feature. So you want to tick these two options. Now, depending on what you want to sort of achieve, you can just tick the top one, which lets people schedule linked tasks, but not let people run them immediately, if that makes sense. So if you tick the second box, people can actually go and run those linked tasks immediately. That's handy in the use case where maybe there's a Salesforce data source or something out there that needs it refreshing immediately, and you just want to get it out to your users. Now that that's set up, now that you've got that option ticked, you can actually go back to the project that I had set up for this. And you can see here that I have all the parts that I need. I've essentially got two flows. I'll open them up in separate tabs here so we can just have a look at what they're doing. The first one essentially just has a, a simple set of Excel files coming together, doing some data prep and coming out to a published data source. The second one has uh, that published data source, so it's dependent on that first flow, and then some targets and some quotas coming together and then being output into another published data source. And both of those data sources are actually here in my folder. You can see here they're called part two file and part one. Really bad naming, yes, I understand, but nonetheless, you can see that they're working perfectly fine. Now, if I go to part one, you can see that I actually already have a linked task here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the first cool thing about this. When you delete one linked task, it deletes all of them. So if I go here to this tick box, select actions and delete, um, you'll see that this linked task disappears from the other flow. If we go back to the 2021.3 folder, go to part two, you'll see that this uh, schedule task has also disappeared. It's not there anymore. So one great thing about linked tasks is if you create them, uh, they get deleted from all the subsequent flows where they've been set up. It's a really, really nice feature. It saves you having to do lots of sort of housekeeping. And it, it makes a lot of sense, actually. Now, how do we set this up? Well, you just need to go to one of the two flows that you want to link. So in this case, I'm going to part two. I'm going to select new task. And when we get to this option, you've got the standard uh, task setup that we've had before, but now you can see this new feature here called linked tasks. Again, remember this doesn't show, or this won't show if it's not enabled on your Tableau online site or on Tableau server. Now, what you get to see is this interface, and this interface essentially allows us to set up our linked tasks. You can see here that the first uh, flow that it has is part two, and then it's asking me to set up a second one. Now, what I can actually do is I can actually go into this little drop down, and I can actually change that. I can actually say, look, run flow part one, and if I add that, you see that it changes that first one to part one, even though we're setting this up from part two. And then I can go down into the second drop down, and I can select run flow part two and I can add that in there. And now these two are set up. Over on the right hand side, you've got this little pencil. And when I click on that, it opens up this interface that allows us to set some error handling. Now this error handling lets us do a couple of things. It basically says, look, if this task succeed, start the next task. And that will just go down to step two and keep going. However, if it fails, I can add a data quality warning and I can even edit what that data quality warning does or behaves like here in this little section. I can create a, a message. Uh, don't forget these messages have some formatting guidelines so you can add um, images. You can add lots of stuff into these as well. And then you can also preview that if you've ever set that up. But for this video, I'm just going to keep it simple. We can make it a high vis uh, uh, alert. This is essentially important if someone's depending on this. Let's say there's a downstream workbook or a downstream flow or something like that, depending on this. This actually pops up this high vis alert to all of those uh, properties or assets. And it lets people know that, look, this data set hasn't refreshed because there was an issue with the linked task or with this particular uh, task in hand. 
So I've set that up and now we've set everything up. So it will also email me as the owner of this and it will stop the remaining tasks. Essentially it won't run task two, three, and four. So this is gonna be really good for making sure that tasks are running efficiently. I'll show you the behavior for tasks once we've set this up. Now, if I go to the second one, you get the same set of options. And of course you can see it's exactly the same. I can again, add data quality warnings. I can set all this up and I've got an option here to delete everything, but that's pretty much good to go. If I click on the pencils, you'll see that it collapses those interface and they disappear. The last thing is how do we actually create this task? Because if you look on the bottom right here, you can see that this is grayed out. This will remain grayed out for as long as this interface hasn't been completed. And the reason it hasn't been completed just yet is because we've got a schedule. So we haven't got a schedule. So if I go here to the schedule, I'm gonna set this to run every hour. We're gonna delete this very soon. So it's not actually gonna run every hour. You can see that this blue create task button goes uh, blue and now we're ready to create the tasks. Now, the other thing that caught me out here is that I had actually added a couple of more additional tasks and I was sitting there in task number two wondering, hey, what's going on here? Why can't I create the task? And that's because just out of the view here, we had this sort of uh, 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 third option here that I couldn't see. So I was sitting here wondering, what have I not done? And it was just because I needed to scroll down a little bit more to that third task, which I'd sort of added by mistake. Um, I don't know how it happened. So that's just something to be aware of when you're setting this up. If you have many tasks, just be sure to scroll down so you can see all those things are set up. This uh, button will only go blue if everything is set up correctly. And now that's set up, we can go ahead and create the tasks. And you can see that it will just uh, go ahead, process that, and it'll say that link task has been created. We can see that this link task is here. If I click on it, you see you get this little pop-up that shows you both tasks. The other thing you can do is you can actually go to the first flow just by clicking on it, opens it in a new tab, and it will show us this first flow. And again, if we go to schedule tasks, you can see that this is flow one of two of the linked tasks. So everything is set up nicely. Everything is good to go. Now it's scheduled to run every hour, but what we can do is we can actually run this task now. So if I go here to the actions, you can see that I have an option to run this task now. And the reason I want to do this is to show you the behavior of how this spawns tasks for server admins, essentially. Only server admins really care about this because they're the only ones who can actually see this outcome. So let's hit run now and immediately go over to the tasks bar uh, as, an, uh, as a site admin or as a server admin to see how this is working. So if we go over to the jobs, you'll see that we have a pending job right there. You've got uh, a pending job and essentially what's going on here is it's running the first of those linked tasks. If I click OK and refresh my page, hopefully I catch it before it's run the second task. You can see that it's in progress and you can see it's now running part one. So we didn't have to wait long for that to run. Let's refresh it again. And hopefully this time you can see it's still running. So we're gonna have to wait some time just to make sure this is running. And I'm doing this in real time. I'm trying to catch it when it spawns the second task. So sometimes it might take a while for these things to run. Let's just keep refreshing it one more time and hopefully we'll see it spawn another task. I wanna really show you this. I'll probably end up cutting this out so you don't see the whole way. Okay, and now you can see here that it's loaded up and what it's actually done is it spawned the second task. So each of those tasks are spawned independently. So the link task will spawn two jobs and send them independently. And the second one will only be sent if the first one has succeeded. So this is how they appear and you can kind of see this is working nicely. If I just uh, wait for this to refresh, you can see this has gone into a queue. Um, it has a little bit of a, a different runtime. So this is in minutes. So um, it kind of had to wait for, uh, you know, 20, seconds let's say 0 0.2 is 20 percent i sort of take that as a fraction uh ren for uh just over half a minute so if we give it a bit of time we should sort of get the same average runtime and average queue time uh, essentially just just depending on where it is in the queue tableau online is a shared resource so you can't always expect sort of consistent timings but you can see here that nothing really takes more than two minutes here so it's actually pretty fast it's just that i'm making a video so i'm impatient and things are taking a while to load so you can see that it's actually finished in the queue and it's now actually probably running. Um, you can see that the pending time, queue time was 1.1 and now the runtime is 0 0.1. So it's actually in progress, it's being processed. And the, the data source here is just on server. It's just an Excel file, which is embedded inside of the prep flow. So there's no real data sources to connect to. If you had a big data source that this had to connect to, this would take a bit longer, but hopefully, we should see that both jobs are completed. So now you can see here are the tasks. Uh, this was run, uh, part two was run and it completed at 7.41 and part one was run and was completed at 7.40. So they've actually run sequentially there. Now, if I go back and I go back to this folder, 
and I go back to part one, you can actually see the last succeed, succeeded time. So if I just open this, you can see here the time again, 7.40. And if I uh, just go back to the schedule tasks, I'm going to do the shortcut here and go to part two just by clicking on that. It opens another tab. Um, you got to bear in mind that it's opening new tabs rather than sort of closing the existing ones. So it might be spawning off tabs you don't want. But you can also see the last runtime here at 7.41. So if you're the owner, this is what you can see where things are going. Now, if you're actually scheduling these or you're running them immediately and you're not a server admin, when you hit run now and the job gets sent over to the task uh, menu, you can see I've just kicked it off again. If I refresh this page, you can actually see that it tells you that this job is pending or it's running. So if I go to the overview here and we go to run history, actually, uh, we can see that it's um, it's actually gone off. But I think until the job starts running, we can't see it here yet. So if I go to the part one instead, we might be able to actually see that this one is actually running. So you can see here that it's scheduled. So the second task doesn't get scheduled until the first one is run. I'm probably repeating this a hundred times but I just want to be clear so that you can understand how exactly this works. So there you can see it's scheduled. It's going to run when it's supposed to run because we ran it immediately. That actually means that it's been queued. If I refresh this again, you might have, you might actually see the fact that it's uh, progressing. You can see that it's in progress. And when it's done, you'll get a little tick and you'll be able to see it here in the run history. And so you can see that I actually run this a few times today just to make sure that it works as expected. And some of this was actually on the schedule. It wasn't me actually going in and clicking run. You can see these are pretty uh, standard runs on an hourly basis. And you can kind of see the wait times never really longer than a minute here. So that was uh, really, really good to see. So that's pretty much it. That's linked tasks. I really wish this comes to Tableau Server very soon for extracts, because occasionally there are some Tableau Server extracts that you'd love to run in a specific order, especially inside of a workbook, just to make sure that things have the right chronology, or if things get used by other processes further down the line, then it makes more sense. But this is particularly useful for Tableau Prep, where for data prep, that is actually sometimes a necessity. So if you want to do that, you can absolutely go ahead and start scheduling these flows to run one after another. Um, I don't know the real limit of this. Um, you know, I've gone into this interface and I've, uh, I've, if I go into this uh, and just go edit the task, you can see you can open it up again and you can just keep adding tasks. And I've, I haven't actually been able to get to a limit now. Oh, there we go. We've hit it. <laughs> I must not have tried properly the first time. 20 is the maximum limit. So we've actually found the maximum limit. Um, that's sort of interesting to know. So there you go. That's the maximum limit. We just did that by adding tasks as many as we can. I'd love to see a task that ran uh, with 20 sequential tasks. I mean, that that is one fragile flow, I have to say. For 20 different moving parts to go right on any given day, that's a lot to ask for. So if you're having to set up things with more than 20, there's something probably wrong with your data pipeline and your data flow. That's pretty much it for me. I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think of this feature. Um, I think it's a really useful feature for Tableau Prep, and it's going to be hopefully something that is on some dev's desk to bring to Tableau Server generally, so extracts can also benefit from this capability. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.